last time on Roll Gay Role Play. Hi, um, are you the manager of this establishment, this gay Kaya? A thumbs up appears. Fantastic. I would like to exchange these dragon pots for something most amazing. I want the staff of power. Jet and Tara and Benny will hear a knock at their door. When Jet opens her door, her brother Dwayne is standing in front of her. <gasps> oh my God. She screams and hugs him. Jet! Oh my God, I thought you like died. Oh, Jet, there's a lot that's like going on right now, but I was told we need to leave. We're in trouble and you and I should escape now. Can, right, right now? Yeah. Anamik has been captured, uh, and we must take care of her so that she does not kill yet another queen. Anamik's been captured? Oh, I didn't hear anything on, on my speaking stone from Loxif. Uh, I do not know about that um, and your communications with him, but I do know that she is here in this tower right now, and we must be there to see that she is the recipient of absolute justice. Welcome to Roll Gay Roleplay, a real gay, real play D&D podcast. I'm Chris the DM, and these glasses are tinted to bring the shade. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Katie. I play Jet, and for real, I'm having to make the real life decision between um, the sun- transition lenses or just uh, magnetic sunglasses to add on to my prescription lenses. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brandon. I played Tara Deck, and not cleaning your glasses ever doesn't make them tinted, Chris. (laughs) (laughs) They're also never clean, though. The library is open. (laughs) I'm Tisha, and I came here to be gay and operate guillotines, and I'm all out of bubble gum. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm Jonathan. I play St. Eve of Laurent, and all of your intros were stupid. I'm starting early. (laughs) Oh, sick bird. <laughs> I'm realizing now I don't have the disclaimer from last time. I forgot. I do. Said. Do you? Yes. Go ahead. Let's go ahead and read the disclaimer then, please. Okay. Um. Oh my God. Hold on. Wait. My phone. She. Uh, she's deciding to be popular. Like right now. Let me just put her on. Silent. Did you message yourself? <laughs> no. Make uh, seem popular on recording. Uh, no. Let I, him do the disclaimer uh, before you burn his house down. Welcome to the library. Since we are all here, let's go over a few things. Um, Please silence your phones. (laughs) And remember that this is all in good fun. Is that good enough? (laughs) And we love each other and we really care about each other. And that's the only reason why we're allowed to do this. Yeah. Don't talk shit about us. Only we can talk shit about each other. Or do if it's Mm -hmm. funny. Well, if it's funny. Oh, attraction to children as an adult, is terrible, horrible, and rightly, rightfully uh, frowned upon. What? So, that includes children in anime, Brandon. So, Bakugo, <laughs> he's only six. <laughs> First off. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't, I just, I'm not frowning at you. I'm frowning with you. Let the games begin. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Let the games begin. The library is officially open. You want to just keep going? Uh, please, go ahead, Jonathan. A dramatic pause. Tisha, <laughs> I love what you were doing with Benny. You have run out of ideas on how to make her an interesting character. So you have gone down the unhinged psychopath path, which is great. <laughs> which is about as Kelly to Beyonce as you can possibly get. And I super applaud you for staying in character. <laughs> Second lead vocal works really well for you. <laughs> Katie, <laughs> you are such a talented podcaster and you really have shown that you are more than capable of giving us fantastic acting. You have also shown that you are a super important puzzle piece to our cast. Unfortunately, your resume is not the same for Jet. So hopefully this next season, you use your superior creativity to make a character that is a profoundly horny and useless. <laughs> Speaking of useless characters, hi, Brandon. Mm. <laughs> 
Since you stand by Utica's form of comedy, Tara's garbage and her outfit choices are abhorrent. I will never forgive you for her choice of kitten heels and having a legion of short swords at your beck and call does not a good wizard make. Excuse me. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, I lost myself. Let me have some this wine. Man, the tea is bitter today, huh? <laughs> Christopher. Oh, I, t- I, have to, I have to make up for last time. Because <laughs> last time That's was fair. trash. That's fair. Christopher, I totally love how much work you are putting into the podcast. And for real, please let me know if you need help. No, please. Actually, let me help. Because baby, sometimes the editing is about as fine tuned as Eve's intelligence score, which is negative two. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the dog's noise. I, ex- <laughs> <laughs> I am excited for another out. series with you all, and I cannot wait for you all to make a character half as interesting as mine. The end. Oh, that was so good. I feel How like that you- was read over a montage, and you just signed at the end and, like, kissed it. <laughs> <laughs> the end was very high school graduation speech. <laughs> I'll never see you again. Bye. As we go. (laughs) Oh, man. How do you follow that up? I guess you could follow it up with a read of actual people instead of the characters they play. (laughs) Jonathan, last year, you must have heard the phrase, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife for the first time. You seem to have... stood tall and said, no, ma'am, we are not about to put limits on me. (laughs) And now you decorate your boyfriend's bedside table as a fun Friday night activity. (laughs) I will kill you. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers to the Patreon if anyone wants to hear that. (laughs) Chris, semen is not hair gel and bare nipples haven't been this year's must show fashion accessory since before Katie was born. (laughs) Speaking of Katie, she's always telling us about how she grew up in a small backwoods town like we didn't already know she was from Canada. (laughs) Do you remember that, like, actress that played Little Orphan Annie? She ended up getting addicted to cocaine, had lingering (laughs) depression and anxiety. She moved to Florida and now goes by Brandon. (laughs) I'm just, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just kidding, Brandon. I would have definitely been your friend in high school, you know, just in case. (laughs) I have tears. Girl, why do you think I dyed my hair? (laughs) We are not okay. (laughs) Oh, man. But I do love all of you, and I'm very excited for (laughs) the next season and to start a brand new uh, journey with you. (sighs) That was a very kind way to end. (laughs) You bitch. (laughs) And my boyfriend's bedside table is immaculate. He can charge (laughs) with just his lamp. He can charge his phone, his iPad, and his Apple Watch, and his AirPods all at the same time. So I've done my job. Mm -hmm. Have you made any changes to his design yet? Of your table? (laughs) I mean, unfortunately, it's going to be more than $60 for a pillow. So, you know. I don't have to decorate his table. I just have to throw him in the washing machine. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Gross. Um, I literally did a combination of characters and people because I grabbed whatever straw. It seemed like it would <laughs> be funny. Because last time was a disaster. <laughs> All right. So I would just like to begin. Uh, Jonathan, uh, thank you for creating such uh, an interesting uh, and investing character, but uh, I can really tell you're using Eve to work through something. Now, to be <laughs> fair, you have said so yourself, <laughs> and I'm doing the same with Jet, but I think it's more uh, I want to be strong and I'm just too lazy to work out <laughs> than whatever you're working through with Eve. <laughs> Uh, also, if we ever make like toys or plushies or something, the character design will be uh, for Eve will be brutal, given how many looks you seem to turn in the, every episode, just constantly changing. Good, evil. Now I have hair. Now I've been resurrected and rebought back to life. Mattel's dream. Uh, yeah, mutilated body parts will obviously be sold separately. <laughs> Uh, Chris, it's uh, kind of obvious that I haven't learned the rules of D&D yet, but uh, it's because there's no use uh, when you don't play by the rules either. <laughs> uh, anything to make things more interesting, to be fair. Uh, also, if we made toys, we would not be allowed to have a voice box in yours because Lord knows what you give out to the general public. 
said, if there's a string in my boot, sorry, if there's a snake in my boot, <laughs> extrapolate from there. <laughs> I'd be worried about one of Jonathan's. He switched accents so many goddamn times. <laughs> I'd do what I please. Okay, I did have a Barbie doll where if you did plug in different outfits, it would say different things. Maybe that's what we could do with Eve. Um. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> We're best friends. Give me them kneecaps. Uh, Brandon, I would just like to say that you have such a distinct anime icon profile picture energy. Uh, <laughs> does that make sense to anyone else? <laughs> How dare you? My oh. Tumblr is perfect. <laughs> Do you remember that post on Tumblr where someone edited a John Green post to say, I love cock? If he ever no. chooses to reclaim that post, you would be the main character, Manic Pixie Dream Girl. That's someone we'll be dreaming of. Oh my God. Uh, also, Tara would be a huge pain in the ass to make a character for just because the stoning and in individual swords alone <laughs> would be a pain. Not a children's toy. Not a children's toy. It's a figurine. Okay. <laughs> It goes on the shelf with your Hatsune Miku. Exactly. Gonna pay some nerd $500 to paint it for me. Uh, You are that nerd. (laughs) Oh. Also, I feel like I can't roast roast Tisha because it feels like I'm gonna place a curse on myself like 10 years in the future. uh, And I will end up where she is in Florida. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Come on. We only I'm have sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating. Oh. Only one recording was interrupted by WrestleMania. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Uh yeah, we oh, just wow. uh, always seem to be talking at the same time. We always just are on the same path. I don't know. It just it's kind of freaky. It oh, is true. It. Those are my reads. <laughs> good. Much better than last time. Thank you, uh, thank you. I'll follow that since Chris wants to go last. <clears throat> Jonathan, I know that you're busy, so I wrote your next intro for you. Hi, my name is Jonathan, and my sexuality is not paying attention because I was on TikTok. Sorry, guys. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> also, Eve, we all know how much you love collecting body parts like kneecaps and hearts. May I make a suggestion? Maybe start collecting brains? <laughs> Negative two is hard to come back from, okay? Like, there were things that happened. Tisha, I gotta be honest with you. I didn't write any reads because you're just so intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> you bitch! <laughs> For everyone that doesn't know, that is a serious inside joke. <laughs> uh, also, you sure do love pickle shots for somebody who won't give a pickle a shot. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> hey, but I'm Ben, I don't know why you wasted a spell slot casting Skyrite for your message. Uh, we could just greased up that little bald head of yours, sent Morse code out. <laughs> Katie, uh, we know that you love petting rabbits, but not shaving your puss isn't going to get anybody to pet you. Between the amount of animals that you own, how many times I've heard you talk about eating dandelions, I'm really not surprised that your rabbits are the only ones munching your carpet. Just... I mean, go figure the person on our Patreon video recording with a bong in the background made a, jet, a character that's literally stoned. It's my house. <laughs> and Chris, such a kind and generous DM. I just, I know you'd give us the shirt off your back if you ever actually wore a shirt. <laughs> I also need to tell you this podcast is a mess. Wait, sorry. I meant to say mesh. Do you need somebody to buy your clothes for you? <laughs> and sweet sweet mark how could we forget him no seriously i keep trying to forget about him but he keeps popping up again for another episode cameo and that's when mark says bitch i can leave <laughs> <laughs> to be fair when mark uh left i thought that our pre-goss time would be shorter so i mean it hasn't but i really really thought that i would have bet money <laughs> It's not his fault he talks in slow motion. Our episodes are shorter. Recordings are shorter. I mean, our time in between turns is shorter, too. And choosing spells. And figuring out how our characters work. And figuring out how to attack. And figuring out what dice to use for a d6. (laughs) Jesus, Mark. For a d6. To to be 
pair. All I true. have gotten several. It's all true. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. I have gotten several messages that appreciate our explanation of the rules to Mark because they were new to D&D, so it kind of helped them. I do try and keep any time we explain something, when we explain it correctly, or when we decide that we're breaking a rule and I have to explain why we're breaking the rule for the rest of the entire game. Absolutely. <laughs> there we go. Well, I can't do just a, re- a read for everybody. I have to go bigger than that, so... Everyone's getting a paragraph of jokes. Hang on. I will start with little Katie Beth on the Prairie. <laughs> fucking butter churner. <laughs> I, I was going to say you should feel most of these as a library because you can't do worse than you did last time. And good job. You actually did a really good job. I applaud you for that. Thank you. Uh, in high school, Katie was voted most likely to own a loom. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Katie is like a trapper hat. You know, those warm flannel hats that come down to cover your ears. It's because they're mostly Canadian, partially American, 100% lesbian, have furry flaps, and spends most of its life in the closet. Oh my god, God. furry flaps. Did you show everybody your muff, Katie, and not me? (laughs) No! I did. (laughs) I don't know, is showing future you your muff, like, is that incest? (laughs) (laughs) If it's me, it's not gay. You're the... (laughs) Ah, uh, on to Brandon and his tiny, tiny body. <clears throat> tiny. Brandon is part Jewish and part Cuban, which makes him half cut. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't know that Brandon is a talented cosplayer, because he isn't. <laughs> uh, last time I read from Brandon's dating profile. This time I created fake Catboy accounts near Brandon to Catboy catfish him and learn what his pickup lines are. Here by That was you? <laughs> catboy catfish. <laughs> I'm an architect. Want to see my Eiffel Tower? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm an architect, so I've got a degree in erections. Jesus oh. Christ. I'm an architect. Send me a dick pic, and I'll show you what it would look like as a building. <laughs> that was a good one, Brandon. I, I admit I like that one. <laughs> I should yeah. use those. Uh, Brandon, you actually do remind me of a celebrity. Uh, I have to admit, you remind me of Mark Ruffalo. Oh Not because God. of the Hulk or any of his acting roles. It's because he also has obvious brain damage from a tumor. <laughs> 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 I'm going to hell I'm going to hell for laughing <laughs> It's all said with love Alright, on to Tisha I've never met someone more likely to run a drum circle <laughs> Tisha, I'm going to bring this one back Tisha is so vegan, her favorite wrestler is Stone Cold Steamed Asparagus <laughs> it's dumb. Uh, Tisha has said that she was only cast on the show Because she was the only female to apply And that's simply not true She was also the oldest <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Mm-mm. Jonathan has had his apartment broken into And still leaves his door unlocked It's like he'll let anyone in his hole I mean home <laughs> You ain't wrong Jonathan is so gay that if he was a Disney character He'd be Donald Duck's lisp <laughs> <laughs> If Kirby swallowed the aftermath of a bathhouse floor They'd become Jonathan <laughs> Jonathan, the DNA test results came back, and it turns out your beard is part white. (laughs) Whoa! (laughs) Jonathan is still made up of three components, hungry, horny, and sleepy, but now he has a boyfriend to cuddle and feed him and fuck him. And to decorate his nightstand. And then I wrote some for the characters. Eve is all about body positivity, as in he's positive he doesn't have enough body parts. (laughs) If you go back and do the math, Benny has dealt out the most damage. To herself, girl, see a therapist. (laughs) Oh. Jet, for being a part rock, you're pretty unstable. <laughs> and Teradac, more like Teradactyl with that mug. <laughs> 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 I take off my glasses. <laughs> Are there any overdue books before we close the library? You a bitch. For good. <laughs> I would just like to say thank you. There are no critiques of my audio quality. <laughs> <laughs> we we knew that that was holy ground. We couldn't step over. <laughs> I toned it down because you guys never stopped talking about my last reads. It got way worse. I think we all, yeah, I think we all got a little bit worse. Except for Brandon. Brandon's like a cute little bunny now. He's taking Katie's place. God damn it. I'm being replaced by an anime icon. I will say the best read for me came from, came from Katie, you bitch. That was shady as hell. Shady boots the house down. 
yeah. Miss Gaga. <laughs> you brought it this time. Damn. <laughs> I thought them all out beforehand. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, I think we can say Katie was the winner of this one. That's fair. I agree yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah, because that was that was good. Congratulations on winning the library challenge, Katie. Yes. <laughs> You've won nothing because we don't have a budget. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it, I'll have to make myself a medal. You've won a free character creating sheet on D&D Beyond to remake Jet, please. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I've written down everything that I can use to hit as hard as possible. So hopefully I'll be a little bit more effective this battle. Slay. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, we've got an episode to get to. Last time we ended the episode with Jet and her brother reuniting in one room. And on a room on a different floor, Eve has just notified Tara and Benny that Anami has been captured. And the three of them are currently rushing to the Queen's quarters where Eve says that Anamik is being held. Sound about right? Yes, sure. Does Jet know that? Jet doesn't know that you guys left. You guys have not notified Jet of anything. Uh, Eve basically was like, hey, we got Anamik captured. And the three of you just ran off at that point. Yeah, Jet's hanging out with her brother. Mm. Yeah. So if you guys haven't run to tell her, no, she doesn't know. And you guys are just continuing without her right now. Which is fine. Who has the other speaking stone that Benny gave that room? I think Eve has it. Oh, Oh, yeah, I do. Give it to Jet? Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Uh, And also, Dwayne the Rock Genasi. That's where we're going to go with. There it is. (laughs) He has let her know that they are in grave danger and that they should leave immediately. Yeah, and Uh, I did a perception check, and he doesn't seem to be influenced by anything. It's him. Yes, yes. You are convinced that this is your brother, and he is genuinely concerned for yours and his well-being. Yes. Okay. The three of you are making your way to the Queen's Quarters then, correct? Yes. Okay, let's do this then. So, you will make it, the three of you, Eve, Eve, Benny, and Tara, will make it to the Queen's Quarters. Uh, there is no guard standing at the door. The doors are closed. Who would like to open the door? Uh, Eve will open the door. Perfect. Eve, you open the door, and here is what you see inside. You see the Queen's Quarters, which is like a 60 by 80 foot room, right? Big, big room. Mm -hmm. Uh, In it, you can see Anamik currently tied to a chair and gagged. You can also see Hogum standing next to her, keeping guard. Well, ain't that just a bucket of chicken? That is fantastic. I am so proud of you, Hogum. You have caught this Anamik, and we are going to give her the justice that she deserves. Yeah, Maxim said she already confessed. And to wait for him here. That is absolutely fantastic. And I give Anamik, like, the most, like, insulting look I can possibly give her. (laughs) She shakes in her chair and just clearly is is distressed. Angry. Very angry. More than scared. Um, hi, Hogum. I haven't seen you since... Wait, are you... Is... Is he wearing uh, the Kringle outfit or no? Yeah, of course he's wearing the Kringle outfit. I haven't seen you since you got that jacket. Um, how are you? How's it going? I, you captured Anamik. What did she do? She's been working against the guild this whole time and doing all that mayak stuff. What? Did, I mean, what did she do? Like what? Like what mayak stuff did she do? Uh, my dear Benedetta, I would like to remind you that we have an entire queen that's dead because of this here Anamik. Yeah, the queen. That's what I meant. Oh, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Um, you know, the queen's dead because of Anamik in Anamik's net. I gotcha. Uh, Benny rolled insight on Hogum, and she got a 23. You mentioned the net, and Hogum's eyes get really wide. Uh, yeah, her, her net. It's fucking lying. Lying. Oh, that's, that's quite interesting, Hogum. Man, I didn't realize that, that Anamik carried nets. Um, but I guess we know now, because she confessed, huh? And she looks at Anamik to see what Anamik's face says, I guess. Kind of nodding you in the right direction, like eyes, eyebrows up. Mm-hmm. If you don't mind, I feel like it's very in Eve fashion. Like, it's what I did to Marcus Flint. <laughs> Are you going to go kill her? I'm just going to go kill her. Oh my, oh my God. God. <laughs> like in 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 what fashion? How are you walking over there? 
Tara's I, here, right? Tara is here. I am walking over unarmed. Like, my weapons are not out or anything. I am just walking over. And can I roll, like, deception? I don't want them to know that I'm literally about to, like, rip her throat out. I think that Tara, just thinking to get anime away from Hogum, because we all kind of know that Hogum killed the queen. I'm going to use my ring of telekinesis to hover her up in the air. Okay. And actually, would everyone roll me a perception check? I think this is this is good where it's at, but everyone roll me a perception check while this is all happening. Okay. Because I feel like everyone's senses are kind of heightened right now. Okay. I rolled, uh, Eve rolled a 24. Okay. Benny rolled a 15. <laughs> Two. Okay, then. What'd you say about heightened? <laughs> Jeez, yeah. Maybe you were distracted by casting the teleport spell for Anamik, so that would make sense. Um, Eve, you can hear that there is some uh, muffled noises coming from behind a changing screen in the off corner of the room. Okay. I go over and I, I tell everyone, I say, it seems that there is uh, yet someone else in this room that may be in distress. If you don't mind, Tara, if you could please put Anamik down and go use your telekinesis to uncover the person over there that is also being tied up. I think Tara would just bring Anamik over to us and put her on the floor and then do the the curtain. Okay, Okay, so you've moved Anamik towards you then? Yeah. Okay. She's not necessarily calm still, but she's kind of like... Uh, Anamik is like looking at her, her ropes around her wrists, like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As you remove the screen from the corner, there's a hooded female that is currently also tied up to a chair, and Hogan will say, "Oh yeah, Anamik had help the whole time, and we caught her too." From who? Hogan will walk over and bring the chair over to him and uncover the mask, and it's Daisy. <gasps> Eve. What? Like. Shits himself. No, he doesn't. Um, (laughs) Gross. Eve looks immediately at Benny and says, maybe, my dear, you were correct in not trusting this Daisy. Yeah, I mean, I keep a notebook on everything so I can, you know, make sure that my feelings aren't incorrect. She's never really been very nice to me or us in general. So if we don't trust Daisy and Daisy was in cahoots with Anamik, then why are we trusting? I mean, then why do we second guess uh, the rightful justice that is supposed to be bestowed upon Anamik? I'm not saying that the justice isn't necessarily rightful. I will say that I do have a uh, concern over um, this. And she pulls out Hogum's nut from her backpack. Oh, um, it was stolen from me while I was traveling with her. Oh, okay. And I then- will honestly say that I am conf- I would like to say that Hogum has worked with us for quite some time. And also, I am a little perplexed because we know that Anamik is capable of switching and flip-flopping through timelines. Um, that is something that she is more than capable of doing. She has done harm to us in the past, has caused um, assassins to seek out our blood and revenge. I don't think that she is above framing someone that we trust. That's a good point. She did... Uh... Try to attack us in a mansion full of people. Yeah, that is very true. Um, she has apologized about that. And I mean, not that an apology is, is, is a good, uh... I stole kneecaps you know. from a dragon. If that dragon was alive right now, could I just apologize? Um, no, probably not. I don't think that's how that works, ma'am. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Um, as they're, as they're doing that, Benny pulls down the mouthpiece the whatever's gagging Anamik and Eve is walking over to Anamik as well Mm. this is bullshit bullshit and you know it you have net it's proof that it's him get me out of this fucking don't you come near me I will kill you hell Uh, how are you going to kill me tied up Miss Anamik and once again let's remember what you have done in the past 
Oh, why won't you let me out? We'll do this with no weapons, hand on hand. Let's go. Deceit is not something that you are above, ma'am. Oh, wait, is this a trial by combat situation? Eve, like, shivers with excitement. As the tensions are rising, the quarter's door will open. Loxif will appear and stick his head back outside and say to a guard, All right, uh, actually, roll perception. Let me see who hears this. Benny got 19. Eve rolled a 13. 11. I need to make a character with better perception. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so everybody but Tira can hear Loxif say, All right, here, lock. I'll lock it from the inside. Don't let anyone in or out. All right, you don't need to come out until I come get you. Got it? Shuts the door behind you. It says, great. Everyone, almost everyone is here. Friend, okay? It's fine. I see we have Anamik. Hi, why is she ungagged? We don't need to. We don't need to hear from you anymore. We've already know you confessed. I did not confess to nothing, bullshit. That's not what I heard. And since we already got a confession, we're kind of done. So, Hogum, great job. As always. Hi, Benny. Eve, so great to see you guys again. I hear we have an accomplice. We'll take care of her, too. Thanks for all your help on this tonight. I actually have some uh, pretty great news. Uh, Loxif is moving up again. Since we've lost our dear Queen Amelia, someone had to take place as the queen. And since my crew, you guys, helped me uh, locate the queen, uh, they went ahead and promoted me to the queen. And now I'm going to be, I'm going to be coronated soon. And I've decided my first act is going to be nominating a new captain, Hogum, which makes perfect sense. Now that he's Kringle, that means that my queendom also includes the Beaverhampton Expanse. So we're covering that area too, bringing that back and making it not so uh, scaly scary. Right. But we do need to take care of these two first. So uh, why don't we just put this right back over your mouth there, sweetie? And Loxib Lox will come over and put it back over on Amik's mouth. And, um... Yeah, I would say this is all wrapped up. Did you say that being the one that found Anamik makes you qualified to to be the queen? Well, I've also been an exceptional captain. I've been with the guild for a very long time, and I've made my presence known here. Yes, I would say it qualifies. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't hurt that I know I've gotten to know a couple of the queens. You know, get on everyone's good side, play the game. That's what you got to do sometimes. That's true, I guess. If you want a queen that... That plays games. I mean, like the game that you're playing right now with keeping this enemy alive. Right. We have her confession. There's nothing more that we need to do, I would say. Unless there's anything that you can tell me. She's just going to hold up the net. And, well, um, this, this net, um, this is, this was over the queen. And when, when she was dead. So whoever put this net over the queen is... I mean, probably the one that that killed her, right? And, and she was slashed with an axe, and I don't think Anna, Anna Meek carries an axe. I've never seen an axe. She's magic. I mean, it doesn't add up. I haven't heard anything from Anna Meek saying that she would do that. And every conversation I've had with Anna Meek, um, she doesn't seem like one who cares about queens. But she did kill, uh, she did care about getting us killed. I remind you of that. Right. I mean, she's a criminal. This is just par for the course for her. She's just back at her old ways. Couldn't wait to get out, you know? Yeah, so you're saying that people can't be rehabilitated? That once they're evil, they stay evil? My dear uh, Benny, I just rem- I just want to remind you that mm-hmm. Anamik did not just attack any old body. Uh, she attacked us, um... That is true. Right, right, rifle people contracted uh, members of the guild, as well as the queen, um, as well as I don't even what is this? What would what would we consider this treason? Oh, absolutely treason! High crimes against the crown, Miss Bennett. I don't think that rehabilitation is going to be really a thing that we can have on the table at this moment. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, Unless you have proof of something else, Bunny. Unless you... I mean, besides this net and the axe mark across the queen's net. neck. I mean, she could have gotten an axe and hidden it. Everyone, I mean, I everyone has an axe. It's not... I don't believe that she's... She could have gotten the she's... axe and the net from Hogum. I mean, it could be anyone's net. She could have gotten the net from him. I... Well, I also have one other thing. 
and she pulls out the button and walks up to Hogum with his outfit on. Does it match? Wait, I thought no. it, he was wearing the Kringle outfit. Yeah. He was wearing, wearing it, no, it does not match the Kringle outfit. Okay. Um, Lox is like, satisfied? Yeah. Does it smell like him? She brings the button back to Anamik to see if it matches anything Anamik's wearing. <laughs> also does not match anything Anamik's wearing. Um, well, I have this button. Um, it could be proof of something, but I'm not exactly sure what. It's, I'm sure it's nothing. Don't worry about that. Um, Here, how about you just give it to me and I will look into it for you. Well, hold on one second. And she holds it up against Loxif's clothes. <laughs> don't you, yeah, why don't you roll something for that one? Okay, investigations. 17. Uh, you can see that one of his buttons was recently sewed back on and is a slightly different color. The rest of them do match the button that you have in your hands. Oh, no. This is... Yeah, I do have one more thing, and you're right. It doesn't match Hogum's outfit, and it doesn't match Anamik's outfit, but guess whose outfit this button matches? And she pushes it up against his chest. Uh. Eve readies his staff of power and is about to baseball swing Anamik in the face. Oh, no. <laughs> but, but, but look at all these clues. I think that she has insulted me enough <laughs> over this series that Eve doesn't care. He actually just wants to hurt Anamik really bad. I, I mean, I'm not going to stop you from taking a swing if no one else is going to stop you. Yeah, I mean, Benny's preoccupied holding a button up against Loxif, so... 16. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just... Yeah, I swing the Staff of Power. Okay, go ahead and make an attack with advantage, because she's tied up. And that's 18 plus 6 plus 2 is 26. That hits. So I um, swing it, and that's <laughs> going to do... Uh, 8 plus 1 is 9. <laughs> um... And then it does an additional power strike. That's what it is. Another 1d6, which is six. So I do 15 points of damage. Like, I want to clock her straight in the face. Okay. I'll say you hit her so hard that it throws the chair off balance and she falls backwards onto her back. And I say, I have had absolutely enough. Benny, if you think that Loxiv is a part of the plan, then do something. But right now, what we have is an individual in this room who has tried to kill us multiple times. If you are going to attack, then attack. But these questions are not doing it for this one right here. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's fair. Um, Hold on. We don't need to just start swinging stuff. I mean, that was really funny. We don't need to attack anything yet and find with the button. Stop. Okay, look. Yes, I may have had something to do with the queen, but you don't know how it is to get promoted in the skill. It's I've been overlooked so many times for the captain's job and the queen was, you know, taking bribes from Flint and the people before. So I just needed to get rid of the queen and had just take her position so we can run this queendom in a better way. That's all I'm trying to do is make this queendom better. So she had to go. Amelia was awful. Look, and Loxa will pull her journal out. She didn't care about anybody. She was just taking bribes. This is all of it. And I had to take the journal because she was on to what I was going to do. So, yes, maybe I did, but that doesn't need to leave this room. We have a scapegoat in Anamik, and this queendom is going to be better now that I'm here. And Hogum's here as the captain. And it's a bigger queendom, which means that we are the largest queendom. For the first time ever, we're the biggest. But you murdered somebody to get there instead of holding trial or showing the other queens what she'd been doing. I mean, that could have been a thing, right? I've tried to handle it nicely. I've tried to do it the correct way, but I've seen how the politics work here, and I play the game. And, well, damn it, I played it really well. I'm the fucking queen now. So, I'd say it worked out. And yeah, maybe some people are getting blamed and had to go for it to happen. She wasn't old enough for me to wait for her to die. She just had to abdicate the throne in a more forceful manner. That's all. Well, Eve is getting ready to swing again on this Anamik. You're really a bad guy. Um, Eve, maybe hold off on that because you could possibly use those hits on somebody else. No, that's the thing, Benny. This is supposed to be a better 
better queendom, okay? And I want you guys to be a part of it. All right, I want, I want Hogan to be my captain, and I want you guys to still work with us permanently, full-time, and making this a better place, and enforcing new rules and new laws. And yes, I used the Maic Scare, which I did know about, because, you know, as I said, Anamik has already been paying for that crime. We knew about this already, so I knew it was going to happen. And yes, I was using it to scare you guys a little bit and scare the entire queendom. It made us vulnerable, it made us weak, and it made the queen vulnerable. It needed to happen. And it, honestly, you guys kind of helped with all the destruction you caused along the way. Wait, so, you were the one in control of the Maya to scare people? Oh, I wasn't doing any of that. I just kind of, you know, knew ahead of time. Again, this time travel with Anamik opened up a world of knowledge to us. We just keep it quiet from everybody and use it to our advantage. Knew ahead of time as in you could have prevented it? Well, yes, but then she wouldn't have been, she couldn't have been tried and convicted and then serving her sentence. So it would create a paradox. So we can't do that. I knew you guys would make it out okay. So I wasn't putting you guys in danger, but per se. I mean, I can't put, predict everything, but I mean, I. You put, you put Jet's brother and her dog in danger. Where is Jet? Now, that was not me. That was genuinely Mara. She was an awful person. That's not untrue. She was bad, bad. But, you know, we had to let her do her thing first. But you didn't warn us. We could have stopped her. Again, Paradox can't stop her because we needed to make sure Anamik was doing part of it. So everything, that, you know, those people that died there had to die so that we could convict Anamik on the bad stuff. It, it, it's, we couldn't just stop her. We couldn't just stop it. We, I know this is tough. And sometimes you have to make tough decisions in these roles. And that's what this is. And we're going to fix this queendom now, okay? No more Maic scares. No more fighting over religions. We're going to just... We're going to just follow one god. All of our queendom, one god. And that's what I need your help with, is enforcing that with everybody. Making sure we're following the one true god and not all these other false idols. What's... What's the one true god? So you support Maic. Oh, god, no. Maic's not the god I'm talking about. No, no, no. Who are you talking about? Really, I think it's only right for the god to <laughs> show themselves. As you say that, Eve steps right on top of Anamik's, like, like, chest. Like, steps right on top of her chest. And <clears throat> you see these black 40, like, 40-inch 40 wings pop out of his back. And then a crown of white stars, like, populate around him. And he says, well, um, voila, here I am. And I am so close to my goal of seeking revenge on that hag that has taken not only my spot, but the spot of so many others away from me, that this isn't even about the queen or the queendom. It is about my rightful place as God, as the Yonce, as Eve should be in the heavens right now. And I am going to just put all of my weight through Anamik's chest and kill her. Can I do that? Uh Benny's not going to let you kill her. Uh, uh, Benny, what the fuck is going on? Is everybody in your team associated with this? Girl, you are in my team. <laughs> are you? I, me and um, Chet came along here, and, and and it seems like y'all were helping what we were trying to prevent. Mm, are you one on this, too? Oh, my God. No. Um, She hands Tara... All of the religious artifacts that she has collected. The DVD box set, uh, the Halo, and she hands them all over to Tara and says, Pr Protect these. Um, this is gonna get ugly. As you say that, I am going to use one of my uh stars and i am going to say i am going to kill anamik 
I am going to bring Yonsei here. I am going to strip her of her place. I am going to be the next god. You all don't even understand that this isn't about you. This is about what I want. And I need this to happen. So I am going to use one of the stars that's populating around me. And I'm going to attack the enemy. Uh, yeah, you're using this as like your... Yeah, she is the sacrifice to bring Yonsei here. I would say that that can happen without a uh, a roll. That's something that we've already discussed that was going to happen. So yes, absolutely, you can. Okay. Uh, how does how do you how do you kill enemy? I feel like stomping through the chest is a bit. <laughs> no. Um, no, I use uh, one of the stars. Like touches her face, and then it like goes into her skin, like right at her like. I don't know. It goes into her neck, actually. Yeah, one of the stars goes into her neck, and then you just see, like, a little vibration, 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 and she explodes. <laughs> okay. Gross. <laughs> Gross. So then you see Anamik explode in front of you. Wait, so Anamik is dead? Yep. And I say, part one done? Eve, no! As that happens, an ethereal light shines in the corner. From it, you can see a beautiful, wind-blown woman gliding across the ground. Uh, it is the god herself, Yonsei. Immediately pull out the, the blue, like, I guess, capelet I had made for her. And I'm going to wrap her in it. Wrap her in it? Yes. Okay. And I walk <laughs> over to her, and I wrap her in this blue fabric. And I say something ugly for someone so beautiful. And as it touches her skin, it, tu- it turns into this putrid, like, green, like, oozing, like, mucus type of capelet. And it's all the body parts that I've collected from ugly things as we've killed them. And I'm wrapping her in it. As this shrouds... Yansei, she freezes in place, completely stoic. I then look over at Benny and I say, Benny, this is it. You don't know that we have had quite the past together, or maybe you do, maybe you've forgotten. But she is the reason why we are not ascended right now. She is the reason why, as the children of destiny, we have been taken from our rightful place. I regained my knowledge of what has happened in prior times. Maybe you haven't. But because of her and her deceit, you have been cast into this role of being someone that does not know who they are. Break the halo. I I think Tara has the halo right now, Tara right? Tara has the halo right now. Oh, my God. She's looking back and forth between Benny and the halo. And like, I I don't. I don't know if you want to do this, Benny. I don't know what's going to happen. And I started screaming, and I'm like, she is a liar. She has lied to all of you. So have you. Only to bring her back to where she needs to be. That her position that she is in right now was gotten through deceit. And I am sick of her lies. But what about us? What about the synagogue? What about all the other cultures and religions that are in the queendom? I honestly have no issue with other religions. I want my rifle spot. I am the true Yonsei. And I look at the halo again and I say, break the halo. Let me have what is rightfully mine. And I look at Yonsei and I say, you will no longer get away with these crimes. Your father saved you once. He will not save you again. Guys, we're going to need you to break the halo. And if if you're not going to do it, Hogan, just go get the damn thing. You do it. Benny looks I, at Hogum. She knows that Tara has the halo. She's not reaching for it or anything. But Benny looks at Hogum and says, "You're, you're a part of this." Benny, I'm not your enemy. I'm just doing a job. Even if it hurts other people. Hogum looks down to Anamik and frowns. Only the bad people should be hurt. Yeah. I feel really bad about that one. Yeah, she was my friend too. She shouldn't have died. I did not know Eve's agenda. 
I'm really gonna miss her. Um, I say you can probably just find her on one of your many timelines that she likes I, to I, travel I, through. I would like to restate once again, I have no interest in other religions. I have no interest in ruling over anything. I just want my rifle spot as the true Yonce. Tara holds up the uh, the halo and goes, well, I, I don't know if we can beat him, so I guess... And I cast Shatter on the body part shroud that's on Yonce. Um. Oh shit! I oh I don't want to. Let me look that up. That might have done something. It is important to note that Jet, while this is all happening upstairs from you, your brother has been explaining to you what he knows, how Hogum uh, helped him escape how they've been kind of traveling together, and he's explaining, like, they're working with Loxif, they're trying to take over the queendom, this is what they're saying, and they're willing to kill people for it, and that's why Hogan wanted us to leave. I was supposed to come and get you all, all of you out of here so you wouldn't have to fight and you wouldn't have to do anything. We just So now Jet knows that her friends are potentially in trouble, but also knows that her brother is now safe with her and is telling them that it's dangerous to go find them. Okay. Yeah, no, like, I'm really sorry, Dwayne. You know how to get out of here safely, though, right? Like, you know how to get out of here safely? You can't leave me again, Jet. They're my friends now, okay? I made friends since you left. That's what you get for, you know, not writing more frequently. Or what I get for not writing more frequently. But I can't blame anyone now. I have to go help my friends. Just take as many people as you can and get out of here. Also, like, maybe let someone else know about this whole thing if... Someone's overthrowing queens? Oh, right. I should probably tell someone, not just you. Good call. Huh. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love you so much. You're so lucky. I love you, too, Jet. <laughs> All right, I'll go find someone. <laughs> you just be safe, okay? Yes, you too. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, she says, I love you, and then she gives him a hug, and then she, like, gives him a kick. Get going. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, basically, I'm going to have to, you're, Jet, you're going to come in after the fact on anything now. But now okay, yeah, no, out, but she you know is things. like, I'm like, she's in her pajamas, she's got her weapons, and she's running. She doesn't know where exactly she's. Uh, going. Dwayne will tell you that they're in the Queen's Quarters. You can know that. Okay. Yep. So, well, I'll let you know when you come in then. Okay. So, Shatter, a sudden loud ringing noise painfully erupts, point of choice. A non magical object that isn't being worn takes damage. If it's on a specter, is it really being worn? <laughs> It's a also magic. A magical it, it's item. also a magical item, baby. Is it intrinsically magical, or is it a piece of cloth that has body parts attached to it? It's intrinsically magical. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> just fun fact: when Eve and Edis had their conversation, Edis explained how he could use these body parts to shroud Yance and weaken her. Oh. So, oh. Eve, Edis helped Eve figure out how to become a god, basically. Because he doesn't like what she brings to uh, potluck dinners. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, he's a new potato salad maker. <laughs> nice. Um, so Shatter wouldn't work on the robe, but it would do nothing, I guess. Well, Doesn't there goes that damage. plan. Yeah. My dear Tara, please don't do such things again. I would like to not have to force my hand uh, in the matter. Hogan, go take it. Go take it now. Hogan starts calmly walking towards Tara and says, No. No one needs to get hurt. You can just give me the halo. Benny uh, is going to ready her crossbow and shoot it at Loxif. Okay. Should we just roll initiative? <laughs> now, yeah, that'll be the first attack, and then it will be initiative time. Correct. She, I, she's, she's shooting Loxif because it doesn't matter what has happened in her past or if... She believes that Eve should be a god, but she does not like that Loxif, how Loxif has gone about anything. And if Loxif survives this, he will bring destruction upon the queendom. She fully believes that. That's fair. So go ahead and roll to attack with your crossbow then, and then we'll roll damage, and then we'll roll initiative. 18. Uh, and 18 hits. Can I do a reaction? What? Yeah, what are you trying to do? I was just going to cast shield on him. And what does shield do? Raise it by what? Five. Five. Uh, then it's a miss. 
Oh, well, she has, uh, it's a, I think that she has advantage because it is a surprise. Yes, she always has advantage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being, yeah she's been, she's ben always has advantage. <laughs> I mean, we don't even know what why anymore. She just does. She just does. Bracers? Uh, she has those bracers. Yeah, that's going to be why. All right. The second hit is a 23. Uh, that, that definitely hits, yeah. So, so 11 damage plus... So 11 piercing damage plus um, 17 necrotic damage. And then she gets the sneak attack, which is 46. Which is 12 more damage. So 11, 17, and 12. Mm-hmm. 40 total. Damn. And 17 is necrotic, which means you don't get that back, right? Yeah. Right. Before we go into battle, I'm going to jump in with our mid-game announcements. It, it is going to have a name by season four. We're just workshopping it. If you have an idea, DM me. First things first, I get to thank our newest patron, Christian, from Vegas, one of my favorite cities. Thanks for joining. Your dice are being shipped out soon, and enjoy all the content that we have on there. If you want to check out our Patreon, too, go to patreon.com backslash rollgayroleplay. If you end up joining our Patreon in between Season 3 and 4, you will get your shout-out either on the first episode of Season 4 or during one of the bonus episodes we plan on sprinkling in during the summer. Uh, Yeah, so we're not going to be gone the entire summer. We are going to have a couple of bonus episodes here and there of, uh, I don't know what we're going to have yet, but we're going to have stuff for you because we don't want to leave you just high and dry because that's awful. Who wants to be high and dry? You know... Anyway, for our finale, I want to just say thank you to the incredible cast that we have on this show. Uh, Jonathan, Tisha, Brandon, Katie, Mark have just been astounding in making this podcast, and you guys are so talented and creative, and I am so lucky to have you guys on the show with me. And I want to also thank all of the listeners from across the world. It still is a little mind-boggling that our podcast has had so many listens in so many places, and it's just thank you, thank you, thank you. And as I said earlier, we are going to be releasing a few episodes in between the seasons. We're going to do a a where are they now type of episode in two weeks. And then we're going to have a tea time as well. So any questions that have not been answered in the actual season that need to be answered will be answered hopefully on the tea time. So if you have any questions that you want to ask about the story, the show, a character, or anything in general, you can ask us on our Discord. We have a question submissions channel there, or just hit us up on any social media, and we might include it in the next Tea Time. One more time, thank you so much for listening. Now here is a message from one of our friends at the Be Gay Roll Dice Network. Welcome to the world of Super Idols RPG, where superpowers exist but only among those with dreams of pop star fame and glory. Anyone who believes in that dream can be a super idol, be they an awkward gothic lolita. Yeah, Valerie has her phone out. Uh, Her phone screen's not on. Her (laughs) phone looks closely. A recovering mean girl. Just to establish for no weird reason at all, but you all do go to this school, right? (laughs) (laughs) An excitable fanboy. Can, can you, I'm, I'm really shy, but can you ask him if they can sign my jumper? Wait, hold on. Oh no, I transformed. <laughs> um, can I have the autograph? A literal queen bee. Sorry to kill your buzz, honey, but you just have to get used to the sting of disappointment. Or a mischievous rapper. Lucia makes more clones of herself so she can have a huddle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Join the members of Rhythmics as they reach for the stars in the second exciting arc of Super Idols RPG. A queer, diverse, narrative-focused masks campaign with elements of high school comedy, magical girl anime, showbiz drama, and superhero action. New episodes release every three weeks on Sundays. Check out superidolsrpg.wordpress.com for more details. Okay, Uh, then it's time to roll initiative. What did everybody get? Eve got an 18. 14. 19. Uh, Still roll one for me, Jet, so I know where to put you. Okay. Uh, And Mark, you need to roll for Hokum. 18. Oh, my assassinate. You have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in the combat yet. Yeah, that's it. And any hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. 
Ooh. Was he surprised by that attack? Yeah, I mean... Then just add 11 more. 11 more, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I am playing on both sides of this, but I will fight with the intent to kill. Oh, Anamik's dead. <laughs> oh, uh, Anamik is dead, but what's her name is not dead. Daisy. Daisy. Oh, but she's still tied to a chair, isn't she? Daisy's yeah. Bound, yeah. and she's going to be on my side. Yeah, she doesn't like Benny. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, but you also I mean, did, she's, like, cut off her she, finger or some shit. No, just her fingernail. She's finger also nail. been, like, she, she doesn't probably like anybody right now. If you think about it, she's also been kidnapped by, or tied up to a chair by Hogum or Loxiv. But you don't know anything what she's gone through because her mouth is currently closed. So, But there is daisies that's still in the playing area. Seven. Benny doesn't want to hurt Eve. And Eve is not trying to hurt Benny. Just give me the fucking halo. Or break right? it. Just break the halo. Like, I don't know if it was, like, made clear, but Eve does not care about Loxiv or Hogum. He is dead set on just getting Yonsei out of her position. I know, but Benny has no reason to not like Beyonce. But you have every reason to listen to Eve. That is true. But if you don't, like, if Eve supposedly doesn't give a shit about Loxa, then why did they just cast shield on Loxa? Because, I mean, I don't want, like, Loxa doesn't need to die either. Yeah, she does. Loxa is also giving Eve, like, a queendom to be a god of. Like, here you go. Here are your followers. Have them all. That's the problem. Loxif is absolutely evil. <laughs> yeah. Is he? Or is he just moving up? He... Some people suck dick to get up. Some people murder. murder. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do in these do- in this doggy dog world. I feel like both it, of those aren't great. I mean, Benny Cross, <laughs> Benny, Benny's line is, is murder. As you murder Loxif? <laughs> Oh, she murders Loxif. <laughs> if you ask Loxif, he's not the bad guy. You said, wait a second. Well, who does Loxif think the bad guy is? We also uh, didn't uh, get Loxif to hear. Queen um, Amelia was the bad guy, and now he's doing the right thing and fixing the queen. Right. Like, he's, he, he's got that mindset where he's justified in what he's doing. Benny did want to hear what, what his ideas for the kingdom, queendom were. <laughs> like, how is he going to make it better by being the queen? Is it too, is it too late for that? Because you already shot him. No, yeah, it's it, it's too late for that. Give me your twelve step plan. <laughs> yeah. What's your platform? So we've rolled initiative. Benny, you're going to go first. You have just shot locks with a whole bunch of arrows, I think. Or maybe just it's just one. one arrow with a whole bunch of damage. Yeah. Yes. So then now it is your turn. We are officially starting battle. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. As a bonus action, she's going to reach over to the halo and get her starry form okay. of sexuality. Okay. And she lowers her crossbow again to shoot... At Loxif for an 18. That hits. Is shield is shield only one time, right? It's a shield, reaction. It shield until it's my round again. Oh. Yeah, so then we're in the next round right now. It's not Eve's turn yet, so it would still count then. Okay. Then, no, it does not hit. All right. She shoots again and a 24 this time. That does hit, yes. <laughs> Leave Loxif alone. 19 damage. That is going to be critical damage. So that is 38 damage. Whew. And then sneak attack again, which is 46. Is that what I said? Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot the necrotic damage, 3d8. And so I said 38 plus mm-hmm. 10. Okay. So the necrotic damage is 10. Okay. Radiant damage from sexuality is 1d8 plus 4, which is 5. And then sneak attack damage, which is 17. Lord, is there a total of all that? 70, 70 damage. Jeez. Jesus. Oh, 
That is a hell of a first hit. Yeah, locks of his hurt. Uh, is that all that? That's her turn, yeah. I, too bad she couldn't get that second, that first hit off. Uh, yeah. So then if it's Benny's done, then it is Eve. You are up. Eve is going to spend some sorcery, spo- sorcery points to do a quicken spell. Okay. The f- first thing I'm going to do is cast darkness over the entire room. Okay. So that would make it so that anyone doesn't who has who doesn't have night vision or who dark can, vision who cannot dark see vision. magical darkness. Yeah, I think dark vision also doesn't work in magical darkness. Yeah, but I have magic. I have magic. I can. I have eyes of the dark or eyes of the grave. Oh, so yeah. only you'd be able to see during this. Yep. <laughs> so can I, I counterspell that? I mean, if you want to, you can. But I'm going to cast it again. Fine. I I can cast like three spells uh, uh, in a round. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> so I cast darkness and then I'm going to look over at Benny and Tara and I'm going to uh, do a double uh, a second cast of slow. And then I look over at Loxif and I say, baby girl, I know you're hurt. But remember, our job is the halo girl, not <laughs> to kill Benny and Tara. And I'm going to walk over to Tara and use some sorcery points to do Twinned Spell. And I'm going to use Mage Hand to grab the Halo. Uh, I, Tara doesn't have the... Or who yeah. has it? Yeah, Benny just, Benny just it. took it back. Oh, okay, well then I'm going to grab it from Benny. Uh, is there any sort of check? I guess there would have to be like a... You want to do like my spell attack versus her strength, I guess? Yeah, I want I want her to be able to like grab it, like to be able to hang on to it. So I guess it would be a strength saving throw then. Sure. How strong is the mage hand? I was going to do spell attack. Spell attack versus saving throw works for me. All right. And spell attack is plus eleven. Rolled a thirteen. Oh, you're gonna add eleven. <laughs> yeah, I rolled eleven plus three, which is fourteen. <laughs> And you got a 13? Yeah. Okay. Let's do this for fun. Let's say you knock the halo onto the ground. You bitch. Those rolls were really close. Okay. So the, the halo does not break, but it clings to the ground. Cling, cling, cling. Okay. And even in magical darkness, there's a slight glow to it. Okay. Uh, then I am going to, I think that's, I think that's all that I can do. So that's it. That's all I'm going to do for right now. Okay, Uh, next in the order would be Jet. So here's what you see, Jet. Knowing what you know, knowing that your friends are probably in danger, you peek your head around the hallway to where you remember the Queen's quarters to be, and Mm -hmm. you see a guard standing post. You can take this turn to figure out how you're going to get into that room. Okay, I think I know. Every once in a while, because I made a stone, I I get to pass without a trace. I essentially merge with the wall. And it's not great for like spying or anything, but I think I can use it to kind of like phase through the wall undetected. Okay. That's perfect, actually. That'll work. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm just saying, Jet was, Jet is all dressed up. Like she has her armor and everything on. Like she's, she would know that Eve is in on it with everyone, right? Like, yeah. They're all on it together. Okay. Yeah. Dwayne explained everything. Perfect. I have this for an hour if I want it. Okay, so then Jed has made her way into the room then. Uh, you can be in the room at the front. You can see that it is magical darkness throughout the room. And that's where you're at. Okay. Okay. Then it is Tara's turn. Okay. Tara's going to call Carl's Jr. out of her bag. Call Carl's Jr. And hand him the disco stick and send him on his way so that he can activate it. Oh, shit. That's right. I completely forgot that the disco stick can summon the fame monster. Yeah, (laughs) which I believe we agreed is a... Oh, gosh. Is that summon greater demon? I think, yeah, you said it was like a level four spell. Yeah, that is a level four. Okay. Carl's Jr. takes the disco stick and flies up into the air, utters the magic words, rah, 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 and then... 
do you see like a shattering of disco ball glass and just these threads of caution tape come flying up out of nowhere and, and wraps around all of this glass holding it together as this almost humanoid shape takes form and crashes back down to the floor with a shattering and it it, it screams and in front of you stands a a giant demon based off of a tanaruk. I stand. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and I have to roll a um I have to roll initiative for this guy. Yes. Let's just do a straight twenty because I don't know what this is. Yeah, do you have stats for the theme monster? I do. If you want to follow along, Chris, it's a it's a tanaruk in Volo's guide. Got it. So he what is Oh, oh goodness. Plus Ooh. Two. So that's going to be dexterity adds to initiative bonus, right? Yes. So this is going to be a d20 plus one. So he's got a 15 initiative. Okay. And I'm going to scream at him to kill the little one. Damn. Okay. It's going to be a while till it's turn, but good. Uh, anything else you can do? Uh, I think if I'm anywhere near fucking even Benny, I'm going to take a couple steps back. That's Yeah. I think even in the darkness, you know where everyone was. Oh, that's true. And I'm going to use a free action to call Loxif a bitch. <laughs> you, okay. you know butt-ass having musty smelling. <laughs> okay. Then it is Loxif's turn. Oh, wait. We're in darkness, right? So no one saw that really cool fucking... Yeah. Ah. It was a whole show that no one saw. I guess they just heard a bunch of glass breaking. Yeah, the darkness is what's really throwing me with Loxif, because I don't think he can see shit. Can he uh, heal himself, though? Uh, he can definitely do that. And I think he knows at least where the desk is. So this is what he's going to do. He's going to cast True Polymorph on the desk in the room. It's a ninth level spell. Not Loxif with a ninth level spell, first of all. <laughs> So he's going to turn it into a barbed devil. So you hear a, similar to the Carl's Jr. noise, the uh, <laughs> from the room near Loxif. Now I got a barbed devil I got to roll initiative for. Oh, I already rolled for it. Never mind. I knew I was going to do that. I already rolled. It was a two. So he's going to do that. And then as a bonus action, damn. Maybe he can't heal himself now. I thought that I had a bonus action that I could take, but I don't have that. So no, Loxif can't heal himself. But I think that was a good use of a spell. I don't care, but he's fine. So the desk is a demon now? The desk is a demon now. Can it see in the dark? We're just making a bunch of blind creatures. Yes, (laughs) it has a devil's sight. So yes, magical darkness doesn't impede the devil's dark vision. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, that's Loxiv's turn. And now it is Hogum's turn, who has dark vision, but is still impacted by magical dark vision. So, or magical darkness. Is there anything that can be done in magical darkness? Like, what's... Yeah, magical things. So, like, fairy fire or lights. Mm. Can my sword work? Is it Hold, magic? Let me, let me look. I mean, yeah, I say a magic word, and it sets on fire. Is it magic fire? Because only non magical items can't, non magical light can't illuminate it. But yeah, that's what it is. Magical light com- can't. Coming from a magical object. Oh, like the flaming sword is that what we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. I, think that would still illu- I think that would still illuminate, yes. I think it would. Agreed. I think anything that has. Does Yonsei glow? Didn't you say it was like a glowing spectral? Yes, she's very ethereal. So that, you can see her underneath the shroud. Where she's sticking out, at least. Yeah, so it's Hogum's turn. You've got a lot of spells, including light. Now, when you were saying magical light spells... Uh, yeah, so we've got magical darkness going on right now, so the only light that can be seen is through magic. So Jet's sword is lit up, uh, the halo has a slight glow to it in the room, and Yance has a glow. I haven't lit up my sword yet. I was just asking oh. if it would work. Yes. I'm just thinking, it. just in case Jack can sense that it's magic. So then you can see a halo on the ground that is magical, and then you see Yonsei, but I think that's the only magical things that are available in your eyesight right now. 
Uh, mm-hmm. The only way to see in the room is to cast some sort of light spell. But if you can see the light, everybody can see the light. Okay. Is a cantrip called light? Yeah. Magical? Yes. Because yes. it's a spell. You don't, like, pull out a candle. Just like old times. Do you want to explain how Hogan's feeling right now? Well, Hogan is very pissed off at Eve because he killed on a meek. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just like kind of chilling back, sitting and trying to process what just happened and doesn't know which way he wants to go. Yeah, it's important to know. Hogan's always in it for himself. So is Hogan skipping his turn? It is important to note on this that Hogan was told the plan with Eve that was Eve was to become a god, and it was that Daisy was the sacrifice in Hogum's head. So it makes sense that Hogum saw Anamik die and was like, now like, well, what the fuck? That was not the plan. So was Hogum skipping his turn? Yeah. Because Hogum is confused. Oh, you know what? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't think I knew what I could do. Okay, hold on. Where's my bag of tricks? <gasps> Girl. Your bag of tricks. That's great. Hogan pulls out his bag, grabs a little furry ball inside. And out comes a boar. A boar. Okay. Uh, what's the boar's initiative? Girl, you know he don't know. <laughs> That's, don't assume. Just I gotta roll that, don't I? 13. Okay. We now have a boar. Is there anything else you want to do on your turn? So who, where is the halo right now? On the ground. I knocked it out of Benny's head. So if Hogum dives for the halo Uh and then grabs onto Benny's ankle and teleports to the boutique. Boutique, isn't it? Beaverhampton expansion. Oh, Anamik's boutique? Yeah. You can attempt this, yes. So, I mean, you can grab the halo, grab onto Benny, and you can be, like, kind of near her on the ground. And when you try and teleport, you are not unable to leave the room. Oh, then what's the point of that? Well, damn, that sucks. Yeah. Well, maybe it's something you didn't know. So I, do I even have to roll? No. You can, uh, like, if you want to die okay. for the halo, you, it's, you can see it. I can, you, you can get okay. the halo in your hands. I'll let you take it because you're not taking okay. it from anybody. You're getting it from the ground. But he's in darkness. He needs okay. to trip or fall or something. Oh, well, if there's light, if it's if it's if it's something that's lit up in the room, though, it's magic. There's nothing obstructing his path. He knows where it is. You don't think Hogan would die without like any co- like thought of recourse? You're right. You're completely. You're, you're Maybe right. he trips over his giant smelly dick. <laughs> oh, this dick! Damn. <laughs> so, you, are you diving for it, or is there anything else you're going to do, Mark? Could I, when I touch Benny, could I do the cantrip of light? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the light is then a uh, sphere. Uh, what, 15 feet? Yeah, 20 feet. 20 feet. So then there's a light sphere that will encompass Benny, Tara, Eve, and Hogan. The cantrip light has to be used on an object. Oh, I guess. What do you lighten up, Benny? Benny's boot. That's great. Grab Benny's boot, and now Benny lights up. So there's now a 20-foot sphere around Benny. Of light. Magic light. I will just tell you right now, in darkness, if any of this spell's area o- overlaps with an area of light created by a spell that is second level or lower, that's, uh, the spell created by the light is dispelled. Wow. So, can we say that he did that and he wasted his light? Oh. Unfortunately, yeah, that would be the case. I want to say that's when you cast the spell. Or is that just all the time? When it overlaps? Yeah, whenever, it just says whenever it overlaps. If any of this spell's area overlaps with an area of light created by a spell of second level or lower. I don't know. I just feel like a, a second level spell can't be outdone by a cantrip. <laughs> or, or can it? You know what? You right. You right. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Light from any magical source can illuminate an area of darkness spell, but darkness can dispel light created by a spell second level or lower, not light created by non-magical darkness. Yeah, I would, I would agree with Jonathan on this one. I don't think it would work. But Hogum now has the halo and is now near everybody else. So there's that. Uh, next in the order, 
We'll start back at the top with Benny. You now have a half orc grabbing onto your ankle and the halo near him. Eve is next to you and just knocked the halo out of your hand. What would you like to do? I guess, so Jet is in there with a the flaming sword or has the sword been, the button been pushed No, yet? she hasn't activated it yet. Okay. No, you know, you, you, I don't even know where I am right now. Everything right? is, you know what I mean? everything is black, right? And you technically yeah, wouldn't know, you technically wouldn't know who has the halo. Except that who it's, just picked yes. it up. okay, I wouldn't know who picked it up. Correct. Oh, right. You just know it's been grabbed. And there's a hand around my boot. Yes. She shakes her boot and says, who's grabbing me? It's me, Benny. Oh, okay. This is scary. But I really don't think that Loxif should escape. Um, yikes. I don't know what to do because I can't see anything, right? Yeah, this magical darkness is hard. You can also hold your turn if you think somebody else can do something. Yeah, um, I, I can't, I really can't do anything. I'm just going to cast flame arrows on my, on my quiver. Okay. Slay. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Well, I guess I'll, um, cantrip myself, uh, resistance. Okay. Yep, and that's my turn. All right. Then it is Eve's turn. <sighs> okay. Eve is going to do a few things here. If I ca- yeah, so if I cast this, it's going to get away. It's going to re- it's going to do out the 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 darkness. So uh-huh. Eve is going to cast. I don't know. This this is not a good idea. Eve is going to cast enemies abound. So okay. Eve, yeah. Um, Eve looks directly at Betty and says, my dear, no one here is trustworthy and you need to make a, an intelligence saving throw. 16. You failed. Oh, 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 oh no. <laughs> Your uh, save was 19. Oh, jeez. So... I cast enemies about on Benny. What that does is uh, I reach into the mind of one creature. On a failed save, the target loses the ability to stink- to distinguish friend from foe. Regarding all creatures, it can see as enemies until the spell ends. So you see everyone as an enemy. Can I use lucky? Spend a luck point to re-roll that? Cool. 23. Woo! And a save. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> then that doesn't work, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> so then I say, you know what? I'm standing right next to Benny, Tara, and uh, Hogan, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. I am going to uh, use an action. All right. I am going to... Okay, I've, I'm going to do it. So I have the Staff of Power. And... Yes. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Uh, I'm really sorry. I'm reading over the lucky thing. You can choose to spend the luck point after you roll the die, but before but the, the outcome is determined. Oh. We have never once played by that rule. So... That's how... It's definitely how we've done it before. I think Chris really wants me to do what I'm about to do. Okay. Yeah, continue. So, (laughs) I am going to use, yeah, okay. So, yeah, everyone needs to make a dexterity saving throw. That's within 30 feet of Eve. Ooh. If I'm at the edges of the room, would I be within 30 feet of Eve? Probably not, because every, yeah, the room is like I don't think you would be from where you are. Okay. I mean, locks have been... A horned devil might need to make one too then. Dex. Uh, 26. Would I just be able to counterspell whatever the hell's happening right now? It's not a spell. Oh, okay. (laughs) Oh, it's he's using an item instead, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, but the item's still casting a spell. It's not, nope. Not that, that's not happening either. (laughs) 
I mean, I mean technically it's counting casting a spell, but like I don't think you can counter this. Are you able Unless to cast you... two spells in one turn? That's because of my item. I'm I'm breaking the item. Seventeen. Uh so Lox is an eighteen, the horn devil is a three. Seventeen matches. So does Terra stay or no? I it mean, goes does to the Terra... roller. Yeah, that's a save then. That's a save? Okay. So you're all gonna take half damage. Except for Benny. Because she has evasion uh, when subjected to an effect that allows you to make a dex saving throw to only take half damage. You instead take no damage if you succeed on the saving throw. And only half oh, damage okay. if you Daisy fail. needs to make one as well. Oh, okay. Daisy failed too. Okay. That's important. So well, Daisy's tied Isaiah, to a chair, isn't she? Uh, well, um, I'll, I will say my time here has been most fun. But it seems that y'all are not quite ready for a new world order. And with that, I smash the fuck out of the Staff of Power. Mm -hmm. And everyone except for Benny is going to take, I guess, half damage. So, Tara, you take 80 points of damage. What? 80? That's half? It's eight times the number of charges in the staff. Oh, I gotta read this again. You use an action to break the staff over your knee or against a solid surface, performing the retributive, st- rip, rip, retributive strike. The staff is destroyed and releases the remaining magic in an explosion that expands to fill a 30-foot sphere centered on it. Um, so then, Jonathan, you need to make... I need to make a... I need to do... What do I don't even know how to... What, what role do I need to make? Because mine is like quadruple. I am reading this now. It's a even or odd, I guess. So just roll any die. Okay. It's a 50% chance. So I guess you want to say now whether it's even or odd that hurts you? Just, just to keep it as fair as possible, I've got it typed in, and I will press enter once you tell me what your number is. A 16. Uh, I have even fail, odd save. So you also failed. So I take 16 times the number of charges. Yes. So I kill myself. And Wait, do you fully die? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, are you unconscious or are you dead? It's 16 times 20. That's way over how much health I have. Oh my god. Well, that's the risk. That's the risk of this. <laughs> that's 320. So, my health is 106. Did you just die? <laughs> that was not on my list of what was going to happen right now. Okay, so here's... Let's, let's go ahead and explain what just happened. The... Damage to everybody else is still going to happen. <laughs> Wait, what? the notes. What, what? Katie just wrote, Eve just fucking nuked himself. <laughs> I, can't that's how that, it's, I can't believe that's Eve's ending. But you know what? It's really fitting. Um, You're not letting me be God? Fuck you. <laughs> so Eve smashes the staff on the floor. An eruption happens from the base and everybody goes flying backwards. The barbed demon is eviscerated and disappears before even hitting the wall. Loxus' limp body smashes against the wall and then to the ground. What was the damage for everyone else? It's 80 for people 80. that failed. Benny got mm-hmm. zero damage. So Benny took no damage, but will still be pushed back from the impact. Hogum will take 80 damage, which I think is a survivable Wait, amount for I have for to Hogum. take 80 or half? I'm confused. Did no, 80 have? is the 80 half. 80 is half, yeah. It's a hundred. It was hundred and sixty. Oh, oh, okay. You were telling us how much damage. Yes. It dealt. <laughs> My bad. Okay. Let me Daisy is that. knocked down and hurt. Uh, everyone survives it except for Eve and Loxa. Tara, did you survive it? Tara, I just want to be very clear. At the end of my last turn, Chris asked if I was doing anything else, and I said, "If I'm next to you, idiots, I'm stepping backwards." I was mm-hmm. not directly next to you. How many feet away were you? I'm going to say at least 11 to avoid this shit. Girl, bye. No, you were not. Don't even play this game with me. <laughs> Bitch, no. Nah. You going to catch standing you go, within 10 feet of Benny? You're going to catch the staff, too, because it was in darkness before I'll you even I'll catch the moved. six times. I'm not catching the eight times. No, because you were in the darkness, too, so you didn't even know that I was next to you. Can you not survive but 80? I will survive. I'll be unconscious. It, yeah, it's a 30-foot range anyway. Yeah, so but at 11 to 20 feet, feet back, it does less damage. It lessens as, uh, yeah, as you're further away, 11 feet, bitch. It lessens <laughs> as um, <laughs> as you're further away. You did say you'd step back. Yeah, Tara, step back. You st- 
I do. But it was in dark. I'm saying that how did she know that I was next to her in I'm darkness? Saying, I'm saying that no, no, Benny no. was holding I'm the halo. I'm saying that it was in darkness. Benny was holding not, the halo, which glows. Who was holding the halo? Benny. Yeah, but you didn't know that I walked and, up to you. And it dropped on the ground. <laughs> Correct, okay. but I moved away before you walked up to us. <laughs> no, you did not because you were in darkness. You didn't even see me move. I moved I after so it was dark. This. I'm calling it. Here's what we're saying. Brandon saying six. Jonathan saying eight. The answer is seven. You're taking seven dice or seven charges worth of damage. Girl. <sighs> okay. I mean, it doesn't. Well, you honestly, are eviscerated it in pieces right now. Honestly, it doesn't matter because you're going to live anyway. <laughs> right. So, I mean, Tara can fall to almost 70 is one point too many because I'm at a nice 69 health. I know so. that's right, bitch. <laughs> hey. Oh, well, then there it is. She Still falls unconscious. Down. And the darkness is gone thanks to this beautiful explosion. So the explosion happens, and when everybody comes to, the ringing in their ears stops. They look up and see that there are just chunks of Eve everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, my God. What happens to Yonsei? Yonsei's still there? Yonsei is still shrouded. That is not changed yet. So she live was it like a statue? Is she like a weeping angel from Dr. Kind Man? of, yeah. She is basically stuck in position. Also, I think when Tara gets blown back unconscious, the, the demon just kind of falls into a pile of glass on the floor. Oh, the fame monster didn't even get a turn. Didn't even get a turn. Poor fame monster. Well, back back to guarding the uh shallow she goes. Great. Yeah, you guys can kind of come to uh, yeah, Yonsei is still frozen. Daisy is still tied up, knocked over. Eve is in pieces. Locks if it's unconscious. Daisy survived that? It. Daisy did survive that. Daisy has actually a lot of hit points. And it's shocking. She also had a gun. <laughs> 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 I cast bullet. <laughs> yeah, I gave her a gun, gun in case you guys needed help in the fight. They didn't take that from her when they tied her up? No. No. Isn't that great? Well, great. Because it's, hi- it's hiding in her butt. Stop. <laughs> Nature's pocket. Uh, I will say, Jet is like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, did Jet just run in the room and then see us struggling and like, he fucking explodes? Explodes. Yeah. It's not an Arma rifle, Kinda. it's an Asta rifle. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. The right to bear ass. Uh, oh my god. The right to suck ass. Okay. Maybe there should be a little conversation between Hogum and Benny to figure out what the fuck just happened between you two, because Hogum didn't really act as a bad guy in this at all. Except he killed the queen. He killed the queen. H- Hogum's told you he's he was taking orders, but... Hogum never actually pulls the trigger. Uh, Benny will go up to Hogum, dazed, and she'll be like, um, Hogum, are you, you okay? Are, are you gonna hurt me? Oh my god. Did you see what happened to Eve? Uh, Hogum's gonna give the halo back to Benny. Mm. Okay. It's kind of like an apology for what had transpired, because that's not how it was supposed to happen. I just don't know what the whole purpose was for it, and what it was gonna be used for by Benny. Yeah, um, what I use this for is it gives me kind of a little bit of power, right? I don't have a whole lot of it. And my belief in, in Yonsei and doing what's right kind of gives me this, I don't know, belief that you know, I could be more than, than who I was. So that's what I use the halo for. Obviously, Eve and you wanted to smash it and take over the queendom and kill on a meek. I don't know blame her. Well, you know, Benny, Eve was going to self-destruct at some point. Just had to wait for it. So I I want you to have the halo back. You hear a whisper from the Beyonce saying, kill his ass. (laughs) From the Beyonce. (laughs) (laughs) The Beyonce. How come we haven't made a great Beyonce joke? Beyonce. (laughs) Gosh, waited too long for it. Uh, Hogan's under, like, the impression that once... Benny gets the halo back, then 
she'll be able to deshroud Yancey. Benny, you can become the next god. Kill, break the halo. <laughs> that is true. Um, you know, I was literally just. That is true. And you know, Benny's holy item would be a bucket. You are also a child of destiny. This is your rightful place. It probably is. Listen, Hogum. She usurped the throne. Uh, I keep hearing this voice in the back of my head um, telling me evil things. <laughs> Beat her ass. <laughs> so many evil things. You did something really bad. And I- I'm not sure if we can get past that ever. Uh, but I-, I want you to help me help these people. Um, Tara's my friend. Help me lift her up. Okay. So Hogum is going to, well, walk over to Tara. Cause did Tara move or not move? What's yeah, the deal? Yeah, Tara's Tara got pushed back, yes. She got Tara. her ass blasted, and she got but like in a bad way. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Hogum will walk way. over to Tara and pick him up. Um, and um, I guess Hogum brings Tara over to Benny, and Benny casts Healing Word on Tara. Okay. That can bring Tara back to uh, awakenedness, oh, consciousness. Eight. Health points. Great. Hell. She looks fucked. One of her heels is snapped <laughs> off. <laughs> She's, her outfit's ruined. <laughs> you look pretty bad there, Tara. Oh, great. Welcome. Thanks. So do you. But I don't mention it most of the time. Yeah, oh, that's fair. Oh I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself at a there you go. sixth level. That works. You can start your healing process now. Uh, Jet can also come over to everybody. And now that you're all there, there is just still the... Frozen Yonsei in the room. Or you can break the halo and take her place. Or, yeah, if you want to become a god right now, this is the chance to do it. Break the halo. Oh. That bitch ain't supposed to be there. She she never really did a whole lot for me. Um, and she she turned Eve into somebody that I don't even recognize anymore. Maybe she does need to lose her place as a god. I mean, you've been doubting everyone. Why not believe in yourself? Yeah, you have a good point. It's always worked for me. Jet, I don't mean to... I, are you sure she should be... I don't... <laughs> she's <laughs> been kind of losing it lately. It's her rifle plays. I cast Dispel fucking Ghost Voice. <laughs> it's her rifle plays! <laughs> <laughs> Awful at being dead. Awful at it. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if... It's something that Benny would do. Would she take this place as God? I think it would be fun, me personally, but I don't know if it's something... I think that Benny's on the edge of it, of glory. Yeah. She's on the edge of glory. Would she do it to Yonsei? Um, I think that she wouldn't, she wouldn't harm Yonsei. She would try to be her own God in her own right. You're right. But killing a God isn't the way to, you know... Make myself be worshipped. Otherwise, I wouldn't be any better than Loxif, and I definitely killed him. Or tried to. I guess she goes and pulls the shroud off of Yonsei. Awesome. A heavenly sound rings through your head as you remove the shroud. Yonsei will glow, not look in anyone's particular direction. She won't look any of you in the eyes. But you can each hear inside your head. Thank you for saving me. Eve had gone awry for quite some time. Benny, I know what you were just considering. Thank you for choosing the right thing. She will then put her hand towards Benny's head. Not touch you, of course, but get close to you. Uh, Benny, you can feel, even though you don't have hair, you know that you are now windblown. (gasps) And Yancey will say, it was destined to be you the whole time. The name Benny means blessed. In what fucking language? Uh, (laughs) Look it up, it's true. She will then say to each one of you that have helped save her, for saving me before I go back, I will grant you each one wish. I want my dog back. Done. Mm. Yancey puts her hands down and Jet now has her her dog right back next to her. Oh my god, breaking down, tears. (laughs) Oh my god, so... Hogan brings back Anamik. Done. Yancey will snap her fingers. Anamik will be... <gasps> what the fuck? On the ground. Awake. Alive. Still probably pissed off. 
the whole point of me leaving German Auto was to in pursuit of the fame. So I I guess I want to be a household name. I want I want my name in lights in Vermolhend. I immediately know all of your best hit musical numbers. I was going to say, isn't there a vacant queen position? Oh, there's a vacant queen position. There is a vacant queen position. What do you really want, Tara? Mm -hmm. I I have seen the outfits that some of the other queens get to wear, and it's a bit tempting. I don't think anyone could do much worse of a job. So I... I mean... I want to be queen. Do it. <laughs> Done. Uh, Yancey will snap her fingers, and Tara is now the queen. Yikes. Locks did not have a very long reign. I love it. We've brought back a dog. We've brought back a person. We have introduced a new queen. Benny, what can be done for you? Um, I once had a friend um, made with stuffing inside of them. Their name was Lil Della. Mm-hmm. Well... I was thinking, what if we brought back Eve, but in the same fashion as Lil Dilla exists? That's mean. I mean, (coughs) he wouldn't be able to usurp, you know, your godliness. You could keep him in a bucket. But I would have my friend back. (sighs) Yancey, well, uh, a, a big smile will grow on Yancey's face. And she said, I had different plans for his soul, but that seems just as good as my plans. She will open up her hand, and a five-inch doll in overalls will appear. (laughs) Eve's soul is trapped inside. You are cloth and stuffing now, friend. Eve is cussing. (laughs) Insane. Eve is like, um, hi. But would Eve know what was happening in between? Eve's going to wake up and realize that he's small and yeah. Yeah, I I am cussing. Like, I am cussing. I look at Yonsei and I say, you bitch, I'd rather be dead. I look at Benny and I, I grab one of Benny's, like, crossbows and I try to, like, impale myself with it. Oh, but you're all stuffing. It doesn't kill it you. It doesn't hurt. God damn. No. Oh, Eve, I thought I lost you. I thought I lost you forever. I wish you had. But now we can, now we can be together forever. I have a spot for an empty spot for you right in my backpack. This is not the gift you think it was, um, sweetie. <laughs> Before we conclude the episode, one last thing is going to happen because Hogum really needs to be punished for what he did. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Well, we got a new queen. That. What did I do technically? You the queen. A queen. I mean, you, you did betrayed. assist in all this, you assisted in all this. It was your net. You wrapped the queen up. You gave the queen to the dragon. You didn't You didn't hit her with the axe. That was Loxif, true. So you didn't physically uh-huh. kill her, but you kind of, like, disposed of a body, which is still kind of bad. Right? And you also have been working with Loxif on all this bad shit that he's been doing. So you're kind of just, like, an accomplice, but it's still... Maybe on a meek. You know, that's still illegal. Uh, uh, um, as you do reign and queen, uh, I believe the power to punish is in my hands. Yes, it is. Okay, well, I would like to start off by saying thank you so much for helping me achieve my new throne, but I am going to have to banish you to the Beaverhampton Expanse permanently, resuming your duties as Kringle, meaning that you are only allowed to leave the Beaverhampton Expanse once a year. Well, that's your punishment, Hogum. You are now permanently Kringle. Is that magically bound, or is that just like... I think it's just decree. Just it's like, like an a, honor system thing. Like this. a restraining order. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be paperwork okay, later. Like All right. So Hogum's just going to wink at you. Right. Uh, I want to walk over to Eve's explosion and grab the teleportation ring. Is that still there? Sure. You can find it on the ground. Absolutely. Hand that to Hogum and say, your sentence starts immediately. Bitch, I already got one. And that's when he <laughs> goes over to Anamik, holds her hand, and disappears. Wait, you took on a meek with you? Yep. Okay. Bye. Well. Well then, uh, on a meek and Hogum have zipped off to the Beaverhampton Expanse. Eve is now a doll in. Bitch, you think that's where I went? Uh, well, you know what? That's a very good point. Hogum and on have now left. Queen Terra reigns supreme. Jet 
and her brother and her dog, the whole family is back reunited. <laughs> Benny lost her friend, but now has a new one in the form of a small doll with Eve's soul trapped inside. Eternally, immortally, <laughs> a soul trapped in a little stuffed doll. Tara walks over and is digging Carl's Jr. out of the disco ball shards and looks over at Benny and goes, this better count as a motherfucking skull in that journal of yours. <laughs> Perfect. That's what we'll end it. Thank you for joining us in this amazing journey that has been Roll Gay Roleplay season one through three. Uh, we will be back again in two weeks for an aftermath episode. Kind of tell you where all the characters are now and how Eve is living his life as a doll. God, fuck this game. Unhappily. Oh That's the best thing ever. <laughs> Yeah, this was amazing. Thank you again, Mark, for joining us for the finale. We love having you on the show, of course. Yes, thank you. Yay. And um, yeah, uh, you guys are awesome, even though we read each other for filth. I love you all, and I'm <laughs> glad we did this. Same. So, uh, we'll watched. be back for season four as you know, soon as we're back. We'll let you know when we know. And it's like an entire new series, too, right? A whole new series, can you, brand new characters, brand new story, brand new role. Ga- well, same cast. Can you tell? Can you tell them what we decided it's gonna? What, well, what they've decided it's gonna be. Well, won't that be on the aftermath episode reveal? I mean, does it have just to be? in case? We have had new patrons added, and now the votes can be swayed. I thought it was closed already. Yeah, well, now that we've got new patrons, okay. Not. You should know we don't uh, follow we rules tell- very well. You ain't lying. True. That's also true. <laughs> yeah, you ain't lying um, 11 feet, bitch. <laughs> you know what? Now it's 12. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing battle. We will be back in your ear holes soon. Uh, till then, you can follow us all on social media. I'm Chris the DM. You can find me at Chris Drinks Lemonade on all social media. I'm Tisha. You can find me at the number one Tish, the number one on Instagram. And thank you very much, Chris. This was a very entertaining story. (laughs) I'm Brandon. You can find me at Blue Cotton Candy Cosplay on TikTok. Thank you guys for letting me join. Hi, my name is Katie, and you can find my rabbits at uh, Stenny underscore chicken without an E on Instagram. Uh, And yeah, this has been awesome, y'all. I I really enjoy playing gay D&D with you. (laughs) Hey, I'm Jonathan. I play Eve, the doll. <laughs> uh, number one, fuck this game. And number two, <laughs> um, number two, you can find me on Instagram at Eugene underscore J90. And you can find me on TikTok at St. Eva Laurent, which will have to be changed because I have a new character now. So I yeah. guess we got to. We gotta mix. I I can't live my life through my characters anymore. Thank you, Katie. You've made this very clear to me with your read today. Damn. So <laughs> it's okay. And thank you to all the listeners. We'll see you soon. Till then, bye everyone. Bye. 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 Toodles. Bye. 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 LGBTQIA Actual Play Podcast Network.